expecting 750 barrels per day? 1,000. So this is the picture of this uh, research institute today. So if the technology really blows up and they can really produce this shale oil, the U.S. is going to have a lot of shale oil right in their backyard. And you don't hear a lot of opposition to these things, not as much as you do to the other things. Um, this is not plagiarism. This is like the exact slide that um, that was presented at the petroleum club by the city bank. Robust growth from multiple sources for the U.S. Um, their production growth is expected to be 13 to 15 billion uh, million barrels per day compared to like the age right now. So they're expecting huge growth in their oil production. Now let's do the math. Today we export about 1.4 million barrels um, per day. Their consumption is about 18.9. Their production is about 8. 2020, their consumption, the models, say it's going to be anywhere between the 18.9 to 19.2. Their production is going to go up to 14. How much would they need from us? Right now, we have capacity to send them 3 million barrels per day. We are only using half of that capacity today. So, so how important is Keystone to the U.S.? I don't know. Yeah. Once I read uh, some government site from the United States, so basically they have national strategy to reduce the oil consumption in the United States by 2050 by 70 percent. So, yeah, so it's not in historical frame, it's a very short amount of time, basically left only 40 years. I, I, I don't know how they will, how fast they will proceed this plan to reduce oil consumption. In I, I find that. The 70% number really hard to read. And I have a I have a picture further down. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up. And let's get back to that. Because I, I don't think that. Not sure about 40 years, but I read an article yesterday that said just comparing uh, the consumption rates for uh, oil for transportation, this year US consumed I think 40 million less barrels of oil. So yeah, as the oil, so I guess yeah, it is possible, but yeah, we'll see what happens in the future. So a lot of the things that we hear in the news and in the stories about how environmentalists stop this, and it's for Barack Obama sitting there. Is it really something that's going to kill my economy if I make this decision and kill myself in the polls? I don't know. So I'll think that. So, what next? This is the picture today. So, 8% of the um, energy is, is, uh, comes from renewables. Most of it being um, electricity. This is tomorrow. 2040, that's <coughs> what I wanted to get to. 2040. 60% of global demand is going to be still from natural gas and oil. There is going to be a lot of improvement, like solar, for example. Um, they're saying there has been a lot of improvement um, in the efficiency. They've gone up to 65%. It used to be 35%. These are great stories. And I, and I think like in Spain, they're spending a lot of money on solar, um, in, in big solar farms, heating salt. 
um, that could in turn heat water and, uh, and help generate um, like the, the other ways of generating electricity. But still, 60% of your consumption is going to be um, oil and gas. And this is why I don't believe that they could reduce their dependency on oil by 70%. 50%? On the part of what kind of technologies are you planning to implement? Because taking into consideration the, that 72% is going to transportation. So right now, like few states, especially from the western side, they achieve the agreement to uh, further development of the electrical. Okay, where does that electricity come from? From the solar, basically. No, the solar Plus, I'm not an electrical engineer, but from what I understand, you don't get, you can't transport it um, in long distances, so you have to be close to your consumer. I don't, I don't know all the technical details about it, but that, yes, all electrical cars all over the U.S., guess what? Natural gas. So you're not going to use coal for that. Yes, there's going to be wind, there's going to be this, there's, but it's still that 70%, it might be 70% of their oil, yeah, but not energy. Oil, yeah. But not, not, still, like, it, I hope, I hope they get there. I really hope, because we will too. But, we'll see. So, what do you think? Where are we going? You have three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that we have the need of trying to reduce the like, emissions of oil from Canadian oil sands by 70%. Because currently, this company is looking to gas and oil gas in different parts of the US. So maybe probably that's why they're trying to stop the Keystone pipeline, because they might not need this in the future, anyway, because of the massive developments they're finding, discoveries they're finding in their own land. So the, from according to what you read, why well, I believe it's possible that in the next five, ten years, we probably reduce the dependency on Canadian oil sands, maybe by 70% or maybe 90%. I, 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 I believe that and I definitely agree with that. And that's why I think we shouldn't be fussing over Keystone, we should be finding other consumer for our oil. What shale oil and how do you produce it and where is it? Same thing. Um, you, you guys all know what shale looks like? They're like rocks, like flat rocks stacked up together. So shale gas is the gas trap between these layers and shale oil is the oil trap between these layers. So same thing, you have to, um, you have to drill, you have to frack it, you have to open pores for all of this to flow um, into your in, into your pipe and then pump it up. So, same same thing. So you would frack it using water or steam? Water. <coughs> um, actually, fracking is is um, water. Well, some companies use solvents, um, proprietary solvents, and sand. You pump. You saw those the red trucks. So they pump sand and water down these holes, and the, it, with that pressure, it fracks the rocks, and then when it, when it breaks through the rocks, these sands hold them open. 
the small pellets. He was telling me they're using um, walnut shells to frack. So these walnut shells will stay there and hold these rocks open and then the gas would go up close. Is it usually the same type of reservoir that would have uh, shell gas added oil or are they kind of more separate? No, no, they're separate. Um, let me show you this. This is just the just the gas, but it gives you an idea. Um, so that's your conventional. That's the straw I was talking about. Um, this is like the associated, and then that's typed um, shale gas. Now, <coughs> in some areas you have gas, and some other areas you have oil. Um, 